there are a few ways you can blow into a tin whistle. Firstly, you can simply blow. Now, if you blow, it's quite difficult to uh, regulate the amount of air that you give. So that's why you need to control the airflow that you put into the whistle. If you think of blowing through a narrow straw, now the wider the straw or the pipe or anything that you blow through, if you blow through a big straw, then you do need a lot of air. If you're trying to blow through a narrow straw, it's a lot more difficult. You need to purse your lips, you need to push through with more pressure, but you don't necessarily get more air into the whistle. So for beginners, often they start with um, a lot of airflow, and then they put even more airflow in to get into the second octave, for example. You end up with loud notes, um, uncontrollable changes between octaves. So if you think about the straw technique, think that you are blowing through a small space and you need to almost purse your lips and blow more directly. I don't want you to blow like this because that would be weird. <laughs> but just think of almost tightening your muscles a little bit inside your mouth just to direct the airflow. you'll hear you get into the second octave a lot easier and it's not as loud and it's far more simple to control. So... Now once you've mastered that directional airflow, you can actually change the volume of your second octave notes. So as I'll show you now, With traditional and classical musical instruments, you can blow a lot more without obviously pushing the instrument into another octave. So a way of getting emotion into your music is to fluctuate the amount of volume that each note has in each octave. So just like I gave you the example then, in the upper octave for example, you can play that upper octave note louder or quieter. When something's building up, you need a bit more volume. And when something is more delicate and more quiet, you do need to bring it down and bring it in a little bit on the whistle. And that is one way of putting emotion into your music. Practice uh, blowing harder and softer, getting that shift and that blend in volume and air pressure on specific notes in specific octaves. Because if you can control your whistle that way, then you will be able to add additional emotion to your music without actually really trying at all. For those of you that are brand new to this, it's basically touching the top of the, the top of your tongue, <laughs> the tip of your tongue to the top of your mouth, tongue twister, um, in a sort of toot, 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 toot fashion. So rather than just blowing straight into it, you sort of toot into it. And it's a way that you can separate notes. It does give a sharper edge to your notes. The more you the sharper that edge will be. Uh, if you're gentle with your tongue, then you can get a nice clean cut on the notes, but it can be useful for separating notes where you don't want to use your fingers. You can also do that really quickly and get a really weird effect. controversially use vibrato. I say controversially because a lot of people believe that um, diaphragm vibrato, which comes from your stomach, from your diaphragm, shouldn't be a part of traditional tin whistle music. Um, it wasn't traditionally used on tin whistle. I have heard a lot of people do it. A lot of classically trained musicians tend to use it uh, on their instruments. So it's not regarded as something um, that really should be used when you're playing traditional tin whistle music. 
I, however, struggle to play without it. So obviously I'm a big thumbs up for vibrato. <laughs> you can do this with your fingers, which is a more favorable way of doing it on Ting Whistle. Or you can do like I do, and just like you'd sing any vibrato in a note, la. <laughs> um, you just fluctuate the amount of air that comes out of you very quickly. So you can do that. Um, it's sometimes a nice way to finish off if you're playing a non-traditional song. Um, your final note could be... Just to give it a little waver. To be honest guys, if you like it, do it because the main reason you should be playing Tin Whistle is because you enjoy it. So please do what you enjoy. That is always one of my number one tips. <laughs> Now there are also ornaments you can play on Tin Whistle. I'm not going to cover all of them in this video because I'll be honest, I don't use all of them myself. Um, but I will show you the ones that I do use and hopefully these will be useful to you. The most common ornament that you can use to add styling and certainly emotion to your music is the slide. Now basically all you do is you slide your finger off from one hole to the next in a smooth sliding motion and this reveals the hole gradually. So it gives you a slide from one note to the other. So for example, now you can do the slide by pulling your finger away from the hole or pushing your finger up and past the hole like this. It tends to work for me easier by pushing across the whistle on my top hand, my left hand, and sliding away from the whistle on my bottom right hand. I have no idea why. But there you have it. Slides. Add them in. Another ornament that you guys will see me do is the kind of multi-tap. Tap can be useful to separate different notes if you don't want to use tonguing or if you don't want to do cuts and rolls and all that crazy jazzy difficult stuff. Um, basically all you do is you tap your finger as many times as you like. Now I tend to use the note that I'm going down to. So for example if I slide up, I will tap the finger of the note that I'm playing. You can also tap fingers above or below. I like to tap the note I'm playing because it's easier. One nice little thing that you can do, I think is almost considered a version of a roll, um, is just to play a few notes above the note that you're playing. So for example, rather than just playing, I'll play an additional finger but that is a very quick little thing and you can do that on any note really it gives a nice little bit of individuality to your tunes so definitely something I can recommend so that's it from me today guys I hope you really enjoyed this second edition of tin whistle tips I hope it helped you and yeah, I'd like to see you guys really enjoying and improving your tin whistle playing. It's a tough journey, <laughs> but it's an enjoyable one and it always should be. So uh, yeah, stay happy, keep whistling and I'll see you guys on the next video.